I've been riding two niners for over a decade now. And the past three years, I wasn't riding a two niner at all when we redeveloped our suspension lineup. Um, I was on a hardtail two niner for the attribute of the front wheel, being able to get over things that much easier and it being my leading edge. But one of the biggest thing with the two niner was the contact patch on the front end of the bike. You have more of this tire on the ground. So the stability of the front wheel is very very beneficial and then that rear will follow as well with a two niner aspect but this is the bike that got me back on a two niner especially a full suspension platform and kind of how and why it got me back on the bike was we did some key things to the geometry of our full suspension two niners one of the main principles is we went to a direct mount front derailleur right here on the bicycle. By us going to a direct mount front derailleur, it gave us 9 millimeters of additional clearance right here for the travel of our suspension on the rear end of the bike. Another thing that we did on the, on the Hi-Fi, Superfly, and Rumblefish, we went to a seat tube that's ahead of the bottom bracket right here, which also gave us clearance for the rear end and, um, and, and the travel of the bicycle we moved our main pivot back behind the bottom bracket as well it's very hard to see but the combination of a direct mount front derailleur a seat tube that's ahead of the bottom bracket and this main pivot of our suspension behind the bottom bracket a little bit it allowed us to shorten our wheelbase right here by 11 millimeters over our previous full suspension two niners by shortening that wheelbase by 11 millimeters brings this rear wheel underneath the rider a lot more so that was one of the things that companies would fight when when developing two niners was that long wheelbase and that rear wheel just being behind you a little bit so it would give a lethargic feel when you're going through any type of switchback and now that it's underneath the rider more you have more control on that rear end of the bike it's way more maneuverable you can pull that rear wheel from side to side and it's a very fun bike in regards to having it behind you a little bit more it's more jibbable and in, in my opinion riding on mary's loop the other day i was just flowing over so much terrain and just moving that back wheel where i needed to to where on our previous full suspension two niners we didn't have that luxury so that aspect of the rear end of the bike being 11 millimeter shorter gives a lot more control to a larger wheel bicycle going on with some of the features of the superfly 100 right here starting at the front end of the bike we do a 100 millimeter travel fork it's a fox f29 rlc with a fit cartridge into the head tube we do an e2 uh, technology as well towards an inch and a half taper to inch and eighth steer tube but also the head tube itself is inch and a half taper to inch and an eighth a huge box section for the start of our down tube and top tube right in this area which has a lot of stiffness on the front end when you get to those larger two niner frames you have to reinforce it as much as possible and that's where you're going to see a big box section of our down tube and top tube right here very very large down tube as we come into a BB95 bottom bracket to where it's our net molded design there to where the bearings go directly into the frame so we have a reduction of parts and it also allows us to grow our down tube in this area as well. If we can grow our down tube the pedaling efficiency is going to be that much more beneficial because you're not going to have as much flex from side to side at the bottom part and that transition is going to be a lot more powerful for the rider. The rear end of the bike we went to active braking pivot on the Fisher Superfly High Fi and Rumble Fish as well, meaning we moved our pivot in line with the axle concentric, limiting how much this caliper rotates around the rotor so your braking force doesn't interrupt your suspension in the mid stroke area. We went to a top swing design right here, which allowed our engineers to design a suspension actuation that's a lot more in line than our previous suspension to where we had our pivot point down on the seat tube right here. So it's a very, very true line of our suspension actuation for the Superfly 100. The Superfly 100 is a definitely tuned bike for racing aspect. The rear shock right here, the velocity is up to 300 PSI. So it's a very, very stiff tuning platform. So the Superfly 100, I'm finding as an awesome XC uh, single track riding bike 
but it's definitely primarily focused as a lightweight racing bike. Uh, Jeremy uh, Horgan Kabask won the marathon national championship on it, uh, and one of the first guys to win one of those elite races in a two niner and also a full suspension two niner. The Superfly 100 out of the box in a medium, you're going to find the weight to be right around 24 pounds, and the price point on this bike, the Superfly 100, is right at $5,500 as spec. This, this bike with the bigger wheels and the shorter wheelbase and the shorter rear end of the bike just controls everything that much more than what we had in the past. And then you throw that bigger front wheel for stability and traction and control, it will motor through almost anything. Hi, my name is Jesse Bouchard and today I'm out riding the Gary Fisher Superfly 100. It is a 100 millimeter full suspension 29er. Myself, I have a little background in BMX and a little mountain bike racing, but never been a big fan of 29ers. Where would you ride a rig like this? I would ride this in very similar terrain to right here. We're out in Fruta and it is not tons of uphill but tons and tons of fast single track flat to moderate downhills some really steep sections thrown in there you know is this anything like your cross-country race bike uh it has a lot of the same kind of nimble feel you can throw it around really easy they climb very similar but the bigger wheel i definitely feel like i notice a big difference in rotational weight and feel like I have a little bit more to lug up. Even though it's only a 24 pound bike, it, it's definitely not the same as my top fuel. What's, top, the, what's the difference between your top fuel and this? Uh, the top fuel goes uphill quite a bit better. It's a little more active suspension, so you have better traction up the hill. Uh, down the hill though, uh, they both work really well, but these big wheels in this kind of rolly terrain, they just roll. All right, what's the fun factor? Fun factor is through the roof. I would give that a two thumbs up and it's gonna be hard to get the smile off my face. <laughs> <laughs> 